What is going on guys, Slickby here, and today we're just going to be watching a little bit of The Chieftain and talking about how to play The Chieftain. So, I wanted to make a video about Hesh, and then I was going to do The Leopard, but that's no fun. I play, well it is fun, but I play The Leopard all the time. So I figured I'd actually use a vehicle that benefits greatly from using Hesh, and that's The Chieftain. You guys liked The Leopard video I posted yesterday, so actually I'm doing two of these in a row. I didn't really think about this too much, but don't get me wrong this is not me copying the super unicorn reviews that miles miles does or like the kind of stuff that space cat does with the robot voice and whatnot this isn't a super unicorn review quote unquote this is my opinion and my tips on how to play the chieftain or how to play whatever tank you guys vote for so let's make it a series why not it will not be every day that i'm going to do this series it's probably going to be once a week but uh look at that shot oh my god over the house i know it's amazing so that's one of the good things you can do with the heat not the heat, but the hash rounds. So, comment down below with what tank you'd like to see next, and let's talk a little bit about how to play the Chieftain. So the Chieftain is obviously a tier five MBT for Britain. It comes with the only ammo it gets stock, which is APDS and hash rounds. The APDS have a very good pen at like 440 millimeters of pen at 10 meters, I think, and a little bit more, give or take, um, a little bit less, I mean, at different ranges. But we're going to be talking about the Hesh rounds in particular because the Hesh rounds are very, very fun. Everybody knows how to use APDS. You just point and click. You're going to bounce or you're not going to bounce. Hesh rounds, you have to think about how the millimeters of armor you're shooting against. So these Hesh rounds, I believe, have 150 millimeters of penetration. So that means if it hits a surface that's 150 millimeters thick or, or, uh, or less, it will penetrate and explode. And when it penetrates and explodes, I think it has something like three kilograms of explosive mass inside this thing. It's like an HE shell that can penetrate. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, the way that it works is like the, the head of the round is soft. And so when it hits a surface, it will, it's pliable, I guess, technically. Uh, not really to, with your hands, but uh, obviously if you hit a tank, in real life, the, your shell has kinetic energy, so it molds to the side, like the shape of whatever it hits, so it technically always hits on a 90 degree angle. And I'm pretty sure that's why it works like that. I could be wrong, but uh, that's what I've been told, and that's, what I, that's how I thought it works. And from there on out, it makes the inside of the armor crack and splinter, uh, spall, and then the spalled pieces of armor break off the inside of the tank and continue the velocity or kinetic energy that the round has hit the, the armor plate with, so then that smushes the crew and destroys components inside of the vehicle. So if you pen with Hesh, you're rarely ever gonna not kill a vehicle. It has a lot of power behind it. So yeah, that's Hesh rounds. The Chieftain, how do we play the Chieftain? Well, mobile, it's not. It is not mobile at all. It's a very slow tank. It has trouble traversing. It has trouble climbing hills. It has trouble uh, going backwards, doing anything like that. And which is funny because the turret is actually pretty responsive and pretty good. The turret has good elevation, good depression, it rotates well, it bounces pretty well. So it's like uh, if this turret was on a different chassis, it would be the absolute end all be all tank. It's pretty low profile too, which is nice. So how I suggest you play this tank is pretty much opposite the Leopard. When we talked about the Leopard, I said you'd like to flank and push holes in the enemy line and try to get behind them. Because when you have a 7.1 second reloading heat FS shooting 105, it's great. The Chieftain has a very fast reloading gun too, and a very accurate gun at that. But it's more of a sniper. You can take shots off the turret, you can't rely on it, but it'll bounce on occasion. So that's just how you have to deal with it. You have to bounce shots on your turret when when that happens, you know, if you get shot, you just hope it bounces. Try to keep hold down and snipe. Choose long range engagements. Now I know that's funny because I said choose long range engagements and I'm talking about how Hesh works. Now Hesh is a very slow velocity round. It lobs, you can lob it over buildings and stuff like that. But there is this trick with the Chieftain that I don't think a lot of people know and Miles taught me this. Um, you shoot your machine guns and if you can hit your 14 I think there's a 14 millimeter coax or whatever it is in the coax has the same trajectory as the hesh rounds so if you're hitting with your machine guns you will hit with your hesh rounds 
So that's just a cool little tip. You don't even have to range it. Just hit them with the machine guns. You start to hit, you'll hit them with your normal gun. I don't use it at all during this video, but it's just a quick little tip. Tip it, quick little tip, tip it. Um, so you gotta find good spots on this map. I think I just bounced one off the turret. You gotta find good spots on, on maps where you can get hold down and snipe and really get good visibility. This is not a good spot for me. Um, just because, yeah, you're hold down, but you can't see through the foliage that well, especially if you play on like, you know, max settings or whatnot. If I was playing on minimum settings, this would be a very good spot, I'm sure, because I could probably see through all this grass and stuff, but you can't when you're not playing like that. So you gotta find good spots that deal with the tank properly. But yeah, there's not much else to say about the Chieftain. It is a very, it's not a forgiving tank, but it's not too difficult to play. All you really have to do is just sit and snipe. And that, that's the best way to put it. I would say if the Leopard is a submachine gun, this thing is a semi-auto sniper rifle. They have very similar reload rates, um, but the Chieftain, you're going to want to sit back a little bit and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, the Chieftain is one of my favorite tanks in the game. It is a very, very, very fun tank to play. Uh, if you have any trouble with it because you're pushing too much and stuff like that, like I said, the armor isn't reliable. Um, another thing about the Chieftain, too, is you have to learn to switch rounds. Certain rounds work in certain situations. I like Hesh and I like using Hesh, but it's really only good against the Russians. When you use Hesh against other nations, it, it starts to become a little fishy if you're going to actually pen or not. And also, other nations don't have as much armor as Russia at top tier, so you can get through them with the APDS pretty much no problem. So for example, the Leopards. Yeah, you could use Hesh against Leopards, but if you come into an A1A1, sometimes the spaced armor works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I would much rather just shoot APDS at the hulls of Leopards and the right side of the hull and literally mop them up. So again, I mean, this is like any other tutorial video I've ever told. If you learn your enemies, you have a lot easier time killing them. With this tank in particular, I think the hardest thing that people have adapting to is just the fact that you have to switch ammos all the time. Uh, you have to be in a good position all the time. You have to use your gun depression all the time. And you can't really make those crazy maneuvers. You can't get anywhere first in this tank um, or anything like that. So that's about it. That's all I have to say. So if you guys like this series, leave a like, let me know. Uh, I'm going to have a normal video with the normal cinematics and stuff for you tomorrow. And uh, I think that's going to be like our normal style videos. We're going to have this and we're going to have Sim Sunday. So we have a couple different series that we can look forward to throughout the week. I'll figure out a day to make these videos solid on. Uh, so hopefully we can get into like a routine schedule. I think scheduling is a great thing. It helps keep me organized and it helps you guys to know what you're going to get. You know what I mean? Uh, I just did my first Twitch stream, so excuse me if I'm a little bit scatterbrained. I finished my first Twitch stream in a while today, and it was good. We had like a 210 people show out. Um, a lot of subs, a lot of donations. You guys are crazy. So thank you if you stop by. Uh, the Twitch link will be in the description down below if you want to go follow me so you get notifications when, uh, when I go live. But I'll be streaming a little bit more on Twitch now since I do have a sub button, and I feel like I've been neglecting it for quite some time. I tried the YouTube streaming out. And uh, I don't know, it, it was fun, but it wasn't the best, in my opinion. I feel like I, I like Twitch a little bit better. So yeah, I think that's all. I'm not gonna bore you any longer or try to stretch this video out to 10 minutes long. I think if, uh, I think eight minutes and 40, 52 seconds is, is great, it's great. So I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed. Actually, it would probably be another minute because I had a little bit of an intro to this video, didn't I? Maybe it will be 10 minutes. I'm a terrible person. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Waking up feeling